Hello guys, I'm Wizard Racer. Last time we spoke about the open differential. Today I would like to show you how a double wishbone suspension works and why it is more preferable in many sports cars, in almost all race cars and in some luxurious cars. So the principle behind the double wishbone suspension is a pair of arms on either side. It is the upper control arm, which is A-shaped, and the lower control arm, which is L-shaped or A-shaped. Both of them are connected through bushings in two points uh, to the chassis and on the wheel side to the knuckle through ball joints down here and up here. The damper with the spring is connected to the top mount in the chassis and in the bottom point to the lower control arm. The advantage of the double bus suspension is that wheel camber is maintained throughout the whole travel of the suspension, whereas uh, like in a McPherson strut, it is not that controllable the camber angle uh, like it is in a double wishbone suspension. That's why it is also less common in cars where it doesn't need to be the double wishbone suspension because it's also more expensive because of the complexity. The double wishbone suspension is superior uh, compared to a McPherson strut, but it isn't always the best solution. Some manufacturers can tune the McPherson strut that good that you don't really need the McPherson strut, like for instance the Subaru BRZ, which works just perfectly in the front end where there is a McPherson strut, although there is double wishbone suspension in the rear. But for instance, early Miatas had a double wishbone suspension in the front and in the back. Porsche GT3s, 911s, Caymans don't even use the double wishbone suspension in the front. There's an interesting solution of two bottom arms. So I hope you liked this video. And give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Cheers!